So what is going on everybody? Fernando Silva here with another video and welcome to episode 3 of the Microsoft Productivity Suite of Products on iPadOS 15. Now this one is going to be all about Microsoft PowerPoint which for me is my personal favorite application from the Microsoft Suite on the iPad Pro because it just it feels like it's meant to run on here perfectly. Because at the end of the day PowerPoint is just another way to give information but from a design standpoint and Microsoft PowerPoint gives you all the tools that you need on the iPad Pro to get anything done either from you know, from scratch or maybe editing something on the fly and everything in between. So again, don't worry, the Microsoft Excel one is in the works. I've just got to make sure that I'm doing everything correctly on that end because I know that's probably going to be the most popular one when it comes to the Microsoft suite of products on the iPad Pro. But without further ado, let's talk about Microsoft PowerPoint because there's a lot to like when it comes to this application. Let's get into it. So let's get right into this video everybody. So the first thing I always like to do, if you guys are new to the channel, I like to show off that I am on the beta soft. The reason I like to talk about this is because I like to give people peace of mind that no matter what software you're on, these applications are gonna run really, really well. So I'm currently on the beta software, as you can see, 15.2. Right now to the public, we're on 15.1. So if, even if you're on 15.1, these will work well, because if I'm on a beta software and these applications are working as smoothly as they currently are, then you'll have no problem with 15.1. And the next thing that I like to do is kind of show off the power of these iPad Pros and the M1 chip. And again, it'll probably be just as fast with the H series chips on whatever iPad you're using. So if you're on the iPad Air or the iPad Mini or even like the iPad 9 and 8 with the A13 and the A12 and the A14, these things are gonna run super smooth. So you can see that today we're gonna to be talking about Microsoft PowerPoint. And look at how quickly this opens up. Ready? Click, immediately I'm into it. So, and I wasn't even in anything, right? So like, I'll go in here, I'll get rid of the multitasking, right? So there's nothing currently open. I'm gonna go, go open it up and immediately it opens up for me. There's no other computer on the market that's gonna open Microsoft PowerPoint this quickly. Even the M1 chips on the, on the laptops, on the MacBook Airs and MacBook Pros, they open very quickly, don't get me wrong, but this quickly, like I'll go in here, we'll delete it and immediately it opens up. So if you need something that's very, very quick, this is gonna be the one way that you're gonna get it done, and I absolutely love it. The next thing that I do like to test out with these applications is how well they work within iPadOS. Nothing to do with the function of the application, but more so is, can it multitask, right? Can you go with cursor support? Like, does the cursor work well and work how it's supposed to? So there's a couple of new ways to implement multitasking on the new iPad Pro, and with, again, it's not just the iPad Pro, I'm mainly talking about iPadOS 15. So as you can see, we have the three dots up here. This is one way to do it. So as you can see, when I open up the three dots and click on that, you're immediately greeted with three options, right? You can stay in full screen, you can go into split view, and then you can go into slide over as well. But then at the bottom, you can actually see that we have something new. So we have, this is called the app shelf. So this allows you to take advantage of multiple instances of Microsoft PowerPoint and also keep them organized. So if I open up a new window, open up another one, open up another one. You can see that I now have four instances of Microsoft PowerPoint running. So if I get out of here and I go into multitasking, look at this, I have four Microsoft PowerPoints open and you can see that they're the same thing by clicking on this and you can even add more of them, right? So that's a fifth one. If I go to multitasking, there's five Microsoft PowerPoint applications open and running. So let's go back to one of them and to go into split view, you click on here, you go to the left or whichever way you wanna go and open up another Microsoft PowerPoint. So you can see that we're actually using multiple instances of the same application in the multitasking view. And then what's also brought up is if you click on PowerPoint and you have multiple other instances open, you can now choose which between which ones you want, which will help if you are kind of working with more than just two PowerPoints and moving data around, which is something that I do a lot. And that's part of the reason why I do gravitate to the MacBook Air just for this one instance, but I'm getting better and better at making this more efficient and quicker. So it's just a matter of putting the time in, making sure that you know what you're doing, and eventually your efficiency and your speed in doing it will mimic you know, any Mac OS or desktop OS experience. So here you can just click on one of these, pick, let's say you have one particular one open, you can do that. That is what we have when it comes to actual multitasking. And then one more thing that I did wanna show you within multitasking is another way to activate it essentially. So if you go back into your multitasking view, you can actually grab one of these instances and move it into a current instance of Microsoft PowerPoint, and then immediately you have a split view of those two different PowerPoints. So those are all different ways of actually using the new multitasking features within the iPad OS, and it works the same way if you wanna remove it. So if you wanna move it, move it into one of these other ones, or just move it out of the way, you can go ahead and do that perfectly. So, so far it looks like iPad OS has been adopted nicely by Microsoft on the Microsoft Suite side, and Microsoft PowerPoint is no different. 
So what we're going to do next is actually just open up one of these templates. Let's click on this one. I'm a big fan of this red color and we are in. So the next thing we're going to talk about is cursor support. So you can see that if I move my cursor over, it is kind of adopting all that new design language. So it kind of hovers over and then like mag magnetizes itself. So there's almost like a little bit of physics involved, which is kind of cool. And then you can see here. So cursor support seems to be working perfectly fine and working as it's supposed to. So here we are with our Microsoft PowerPoint, you know, document and we go in here and it works just like any other Microsoft PowerPoint application would, right? And what's beautiful is that with the cursor support, you can see that we have the little pointer right here. If you move up here, it does kind of magnetize or move over or hover to that option. But then also if you're in the middle of a text field, you can see that the cursor changes into a text editor, right? So here we'll type in hello. I'm going to go down here, you know, kind of modify this one. I'm going to say, don't forget to sub if I can even type. So you can see that from a basic standpoint, all that stuff works fine and dandy. Over here, you have your different options, which is just your main toolbar. You have the ability to add a new slide, change your layout a little bit if you want to. And then also you have your regular text editor right here. So if I go in here, we highlight everything, we can actually bold it just like you would. You can italicize it, underline it. You can you know add a subscript if you want. We can strike it through. We can change the font color if we want. We can go in here and change the actual type of font. So let's say if we want, you know, agency or something. So these are all things that are very familiar that work very well and they work very quickly. Some other things that I do want to test out are the shortcuts. So if you guys are used to hotkeys and things like that, the first thing I'm going to suggest you do if you do download Microsoft PowerPoint and you're using, let's say the magic keyboard with your iPad, hold down the command key. If you hold down the command key, you're greeted with all the different shortcuts that you can do in the current state that you're in. So here you can see, you know, we have cut, copy, paste, select all, you can bold, you can do whatever you want, click on anywhere else and then hold down the command key. They change up a little bit. And then you can even go into this edit one, which allows you to see that you can actually do different things to edit the document. So those are your hotkeys. So if I want to click in here, press command A, then command X, then command V. So it does work as advertised in your hotkeys. They're going to work nicely. So again, you have everything that you would need. You have your bullet points, you have your numbering, you can split paragraphs, you can change alignments. So if I want to make it to the right, I can. You can even add all the different shapes and sizes. And so let's say if you want to add in a rounded, you know, square, we can move it over. I can grab it, manipulate it however I want. And then you can see when I do that, that the toolbar changes automatically. So the first thing you see is that up here, we get a brand new category in the toolbar. And then down here, you can change the shape, you can change the fill. So if I want to make it, you know, kind of gray, if I want the outline to be really black, I can do that. You know, you can add in different word arts, you can bring it forward. Like if I want to throw this all the way to the back, I can do that. So you can see that now my text is in front of it. So all things that you're probably used to in Microsoft PowerPoint, you just now know that it can be done on the iPad Pro on iPad OS 15. So let's go back to the homepage. Let's add a new slide. You know, I want to change this layout a little bit. So let's do something like this. So double tap to edit. We'll say hello in here. PPT is awesome. So again, it works very, it's very familiar to people that have used PowerPoint in the past. It just now works in this awesome form factor with the iPad and iPad OS 15. But if we go into the insert section, again, very familiar, right? You can insert a new slide. The layout is still there. You can add comments because again, you can actually share this document and collaborate with people in real time. So you can add a little, so you can add a comment in here, which is beautiful to see. And we'll get to how you share that towards the end of the video. But then again, right? So if I want to grab in here, I can delete this by just clicking on the line itself, delete that. And then let's say I want to add a table, right? Here's a table. Let me move it over. So you can move the table however you want. So I'm using my finger actually to move the table. And then again, you can see that the toolbar is going to customize and, and adapt itself to what you're currently doing. So let me resize this a little bit, you know, make it look nice so it doesn't cover up the double tap right there. I'm going to grab this, move it over. And now you have the ability to insert multiple things. You can delete columns, style options, you know, table styles. So if I want to change it to, let's say something blue, I can do that. Change up the shading if you want, arrange, auto fit, alternate text. So in here, it works just like any other table that you would create on any other PowerPoint. So again, you guys know me, I like to say hello, double click on this, sub, we'll click on this one, we'll press like, which is perfect to see. And you can resize it with your finger, you can resize it with the mouse, you can resize it with the Apple Pencil, which we'll get into in a little bit. So that's awesome. Everything works as advertised and is very familiar with Microsoft PowerPoint. But now let's get into the draw feature because draw is pretty cool, right? That's one of the reasons why people get the iPad. They want to use their Apple pencil. They want to use, you know, the iPad as a canvas. 
So let's grab the Apple Pencil and immediately if you grab the Apple Pencil and tap on it, you can see that the little black marker will pop up. So you, all you have to do is tap on the screen once with the Apple Pencil and then immediately you're right into it. And then I can press Apple Z to delete it. So we'll go here and say hello, which is awesome. So the Apple Pencil works. You have the eraser right here to erase everything you want. And then you have different functions with that. So you have a ruler right here, so you can kind of line everything up. If you want something perfectly, you know, underlined, you can just grab this, use your pen and move it out of the way. And then you have something perfectly underlined. So this is very familiar if you guys use, you know, the regular Apple Notes or if you use even in photos, if you edit photos within Apple's Photos app, you can do this exact thing. So you can go in here, create perfect right angles. That's all, like, I love this little functionality. It's so simple, but you'd be surprised how many people don't do it. And then also, if you want to go in here and let's put in hello, right? And then I grab this lasso effect to kind of circle around it. And now all of a sudden I can move this around however I see fit, put it over here, resize it, you know, and then I can go and hit and delete it. So that is what the lasso effect does. And then another thing that came over, which is actually from Microsoft OneNote, which I like, is this idea of ink to text and then ink to shape. So ink to text, so circle some handwriting with lasso, then select this button to convert. So let's do, right, let's do hello. Let's grab the lasso, circle it around, press ink to text, got it. And look at that, all of a sudden we have actual text of the word hello. And then same thing applies to ink to shape. So circle some ink with a, the lasso, then, then use the button to convert the ink to the shape or diagram. So let's say I wanna do a triangle, but you can see that this triangle is absolute trash. We'll grab the lasso, circle it, ink to shape, and all of a sudden I have a perfectly sized triangle that I can manipulate, I can move around, make bigger, make smaller, and then finally delete. So that's awesome, right? And then again, and then again, Microsoft doesn't discriminate. If you don't wanna spend $130 on this Apple Pencil, we can put that down, press draw with touch, and now I'm using my finger to do whatever I want, right? So there you go. Beautiful thing to see, and that's what I love about the iPad Pro, just all the design ways and all the ways of input that you have with this iPad Pro. If you have a MacBook Air or MacBook Pro, guess what, you're stuck to a mouse and keyboard. So if we continue on with the actual toolbar, so we have the home, the insert and the draw all taken care of. And the next is just the design slide. So very familiar to everybody who's used PowerPoint. It just lets you kind of change up the slide size. It lets you format the background a little bit. You can add any themes that you would like. And then again, you have the little undo button, redo, and then you also have design ideas. What I really like about this is, let's say for instance, I go in here, so let's go to the home, press a new slide. Let's start to insert different images. So what I'm gonna do here is go to the layout. I want a blank, you know, a blank slate, right? I wanna insert a couple images. So let's insert, you know, let's say my dream desk photo. And then you get these design ideas. So what I love about these design ideas, and this isn't, you know, just for iPads and iPad OS. This also came with a new update to Microsoft PowerPoint to anybody using it on any OS. Basically with the design ideas, it kind of makes it seem like you're a freaking artist, right? And the more that you add into it, the more it changes. So let's say we add another photo. Let's say we do this one in here as well. Let's move this over to the right, move this one over to the left, and then let's go back and design and then design ideas. And then you can see that you get auto-generated with these different types of thumbnails essentially, right? So this would be great for some thumbnail creation if you guys wanna play around with it. And basically just takes anything that you would like and turns it into a different design idea. So it'll grab something like this, there's no design ideas for this because it's a little weird, but something like this, it's a beautiful idea to get those design ideas. And then if we continue on, we have the transitions, very self-explanatory. If you guys wanna add little transitions and also animations to your slideshow, you can do so, which is awesome to see. You have the ability to also start your slideshow from here. So if you wanna start from the very beginning, here you are and it works just like anything else, right? You press spacebar to go to the next one. You have the front back arrow keys that work as well. And then press and hold to use a laser pointer. So that's cool to see. So if you're projecting this, it'll show the laser pointer. So then you have this button up here, which also minimizes your presentation, but then shows you all of your different slides from your presentation. So let's X out of here. That's a slideshow. And then another cool thing is this new rehearse with coach. So if I press on this, you have the ability to start rehearsing with a coach. So I'm going to turn on my microphone. We'll start talking. You know, I'm going to talk about my presentation. I'll press, you know, hello, you know, PowerPoint Sid is awesome. Even though I'm supposed to say is awesome. It's just all this autocorrect stuff. Hello, sub, like, and then I also have, you know, my presentation here, which is nice. So I'll press pause, right? We'll press stop, we'll end the session, and then you get all the statistics of your rehearse, right? So 16 seconds, three slides, how much repetitive language, so your variety of word choice will help you keep your audience more engaged. And so great job with your inclusive language, 
my pace, again, people tell me my pace, you know, people tell me that I speak kind of fast sometimes, so I have to remember to slow it down. So 140 words per minute, it's a little bit on the higher end. I should work on slowing down a tad bit, but hey, it is what it is. Then you also have the pitch, so it'll let you know, hey, are you monotone? Are you talking like this and are you boring people? Or are you actually really kind of engaging with everybody, you know, changing your pitch, moving up and down, you know, all this good stuff. And then you have the originality statement. So I really, really like this like rehearsal coach feature. It's a beautiful thing for like school presentations, work presentations, sales pitches, anything that you need to practice before a big, you know, situation. By all means, you have that ability now. Then the review section has to do with, again, sharing and collaborating. And then lastly, you have the view. So you have a slide sorter, normal view, just different ways to actually view and edit your document. So again, that is Microsoft PowerPoint in a nutshell. I tried to go a little bit quicker with this one, so it wasn't a 20 minute kind of rant on the actual Microsoft PowerPoint product. But let's get out of this view and go to the normal view. So that's pretty much gonna do it for this video, everybody. Leave some comments below of any questions that you guys have that maybe I didn't answer in this video. I'll be sure to answer them in the comments. I'm gonna be hanging out there for a little while. But Microsoft PowerPoint, as you saw, it works really, really well, right? It takes advantage of everything that comes with iPad OS. So multitasking works great. Multiple instances of PowerPoint also helps out a lot, especially if you need to work with multiple files and manipulate data a little bit. You know, once you get to that third PowerPoint and that fourth PowerPoint that are open at the same time, maybe it gets a little bit cluttered and, and kind of disorganized. But if you're just working with two files, you're, you're sitting pretty, right? And then also, obviously you got all the cursor support, all that 13.4 cursor support is implemented. You got a little bit of scribble implementation in there. So overall, I'm very, very happy with the product that Microsoft put out on iPad OS. And yes, again, I know that I'm talking about the iPad Pro a lot, but this will work with any iPad that's running iPad OS 15 and it'll work very, very well. So it'll work on the iPad 8 and 9, it'll work on all the iPad Airs or iPad Air 2 and higher. You know, it'll work on the iPad minis and it'll work really well. So if you guys do wanna jump into it, by all means, go for it. They are doing one month free trial. I'm not affiliated with them whatsoever. I mean, I probably should be, but I'm not at all. So if you guys do wanna check them out, go for it because they do they are doing that one month free trial but again don't forget to like comment subscribe if you guys are enjoying this series let me know in the comments below it really does help out the channel and don't forget to check out channel sponsor paperlike they are doing a nice little black friday sale that's coming around the corner so if you guys are using the apple pencil a lot and need a screen protector that's going to make it feel like actual paper and make you feel comfortable using the apple pencil on the ipad you guys know paperlike is the way to go but don't forget to like comment subscribe and until next time peace